guess that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. I've been waiting all week long for Sunday to come so I can sing my song. Have a little church and do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. Yeah, yeah. Sunday school swing. All right. Charge of the bad love, Jericho. 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 Charge of the bad love, Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. Charge of the bad love, Jericho. Jericho. Jericho, Josh of all the bad love, Jericho, when the walls came tumbling, tumbling down. I've been waiting all week on for Sunday to come so I can sing my song, have a little church and do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. The Sunday school swing He's got the whole world in his hands 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 Good morning, GCC kids, and welcome back to Sunday School. We are so glad that you've returned for another week of Making Disciples, our Gospel Project theme for this month. Well, our Bible verse for the month comes from Mark 16, verse 15, and you know, it reminds me a lot about the Great Commission. The Great Commission was the last of the commands that Jesus gave to his disciples before he returned to heaven. And it was a big job too. Thankfully, Jesus knew that we would need help. And God's plan was all along to send us the Holy Spirit to give us power, courage, and wisdom to fulfill his plan. Let's go ahead and practice our Bible verse, Mark 16, verse 15 now. Verse 15 He said to them go
One of the best parts of our mission as believers is the hope that we can offer sinners in need of hope. All of us are dead to sin. We are broken and in need of the healing power of Jesus' love. Let us sing about that now. and welcome to Sunday School. Jason and I are so thankful to have you here with us today. You know that we like to do a question of the day and today's question of the day is what is the farthest or the longest car ride that you had? So think about that and then we're gonna come back to that at the end of our lesson. Now for today, before we get going, especially as the weather is becoming nicer, I decided we want to do a little bit of an activity and uh, see if maybe you and I can have a uh, quick race outside. Okay. All right, let's go, let's go head out and check out this race real quick. Whew, I'm really out of breath from that race, are you? No, I thought it was all right. But I had so many obstacles I had to go through, didn't you? No, mine was a lot easier than yours, oh, but man. sorry about that. <laughs> But as you can tell, obstacles sometimes get in your way, right? Kind of slows you down. It doesn't make your path as quick and easy as getting to your destination. But it's kind of like Paul and Barnabas at the time. Paul went out on his first missionary journey with Barnabas around to different cities and different towns and got to preach to a bunch of different people. But 
as you can kind of guess already, things didn't go as smoothly as you might think they did. So let's check out our video here and learn about Paul's first missionary journey. Saul, who was also known by his Roman name, Paul, was with the church in Antioch. The Holy Spirit chose Paul and another believer, Barnabas, for a special work. So they obeyed and left Antioch. God led Paul and Barnabas to tell the good news about Jesus to not only the Jews, but the Gentiles, or people who were not Jews. Paul and Barnabas traveled to Lystra. Paul healed a man there who had never been able to walk. The people saw what Paul had done, and they thought Paul and Barnabas were gods. They began to worship them, but Paul and Barnabas tore their clothes and shouted, No, we are not gods. We are men, just like you. We want to tell you the good news of God. Then some people showed up from Antioch and Iconium, cities where Paul and Barnabas had preached about Jesus. These people caused trouble so that the people in Lystra turned against Paul and Barnabas too. They threw stones at Paul and dragged him out of the city. They thought he was dead, but the believers in Lystra gathered around Paul. And he got up. Ah. The next day, Paul and Barnabas went to the city of Derbe. They told people there about Jesus and many people believed. Then Paul and Barnabas went back to Lystra into Iconium. They encouraged the believers there to continue in the faith. They told the believers that they would face suffering because they believed in Jesus. Paul and Barnabas also chose leaders for the churches. Finally, Paul and Barnabas returned to the church at Antioch. They reported everything God had done on their journey and how God had helped them share the good news with the Gentiles. Many people rejected the good news about Jesus, but God had a plan for Paul to share the gospel with the Gentiles, no matter what troubles he faced. Many believed in Jesus. The church grew and the gospel spread so that people all over the world could be saved from their sin by trusting in Jesus. In the very early days of the church, the church was really just made up of Jewish people or the other people living in the nation of Israel. But does the good news just apply to the people of Israel? No, of course, the good news that Jesus died for our sins is for everyone. It's for you, for me, and everyone you interact with. That's why our story point for today is Paul and Barnabas told Jews and Gentiles about Jesus. So the Holy Spirit gave Paul and Barnabas the ability to do wonderful things, but also know how to react in all these different situations. And the same thing happens for you and me. God is with us all the time. Even in times you might think he might not be present when things are sad or not going well, or the things that are going very well and you're happy. God is with you at all times. Our big picture question of the day is what is our mission as Christians? Our mission is to make disciples of all nations by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you might remember earlier our question of the day today, and that is what is the farthest you've gone in a car ride or on a trip before? How about you? Do you remember the longest car ride you've taken? Hmm. My longest car ride was in middle school. My whole family, we got into this like big 16 passenger van sort of thing. And we went across the country. We went from Pennsylvania, the furthest out, I think to Idaho, just in our car. We stopped along the way at hotels and stuff, but there are some states that we were just driving for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> Funny you got to see all the many states along the way though. Absolutely. A pretty fun trip. Uh, for me, I remember as a family, we went down to Florida. Mm -hmm. And I remember that we were trying to get down there quickly, that we kind of just drove through the night. So they rotated drivers throughout. I was too young, so I couldn't drive. But I remember that we never really stopped, just kept on going, except for the stops obviously to get some gas, but mm -hmm. can be a pretty fun uh, long car ride uh, heading straight down south of Florida. So go ahead and share with somebody in the room with you or in the chat with us what your longest car ride was. And maybe it was longer than mine or Jason's. 
And also our challenge that we've been having for the past couple of weeks is to go on a walk with your family. Now, we want you to make sure you ask your parent and your guardian first, but it'd be really cool to go on a walk with some of the nicer weather that we've been having, um, even if it rains a little bit, but um, even have a challenge with your own family and see if you can point out how many green things or how many pets are outside that you can see. Yeah, see how many dogs you can see as they bark as, they, as you get close yeah. to the different houses. <laughs> But yeah, go enjoy that nice weather. Uh, hopefully you get to some, spend some uh, great time with your family or friends. And thank you again, as always, for joining us here. We're so excited to be here with you today. We hope to see you again next week. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Colton from Memphis, Tennessee asks, How should I respond to people who don't believe in Jesus? Colton, that's a great question. And the first thing I think I would say is this. We have to understand, at one time, this was all of us. Uh, at one time, we didn't believe in Jesus, and then we trusted him, and now we believe in him. So this is true of everybody, at least at one point. So how do we respond to people who don't trust in Jesus, don't believe in him, don't follow him when we do? Big idea here, we need to love them and be kind to them. They are not our enemies. We should not see them as people we argue with and try to convince to believe in Jesus and follow him. Uh, we should not be upset and fresher with them because they live differently from us. They don't know better because they don't believe in Jesus yet. So we really wanna be kind to them. We wanna show them the love of Jesus. We wanna show them the difference that Jesus makes in our lives. And if we're jerky with them, if we're mean to them, if we talk down to them, we are showing them the opposite of what they need to see. And so we want to be engaging. We want to be, there's a, a word for this, it's called winsome. We wanna be winsome, um, attractive to them so they see Jesus through us. So how we live really matters, but there's another practical thing we can do. We wanna keep telling them about Jesus. We wanna share the gospel with them. We, we can't be good enough for them and show them Jesus enough for them to trust in Jesus just by that. They need to hear about Jesus so that we pray they trust in Jesus and follow him too. So be kind, show the love of Jesus, and tell them about who Jesus is, and be patient. Remember, them turning to Jesus is not up to you. It's a work of God in their hearts. So just do your part, pray for them, and then leave the rest to God. So here's a question back for you. Can you think of a time you were surprised by unexpected kindness to you?